I know that you know that the best way to get your players craving for the next game is by ending with a cliffhanger. Your favorite streamers do it all the time, and they're really, really good at it. And the crack remains as you see your own image behind the shattered glass in the reflection. And that's all for this episode. <laughs> And I believe this is the secret that makes great cliffhangers work. Now, as a game master, I've run my games mostly online for the past seven years. Plus, my friends are in different parts of the world, so we've had to kind of accommodate with each other's schedule. Now, more often than not, it's happened to me that my players are in the middle of combat, they're interrogating a really important NPC, or they finally reach the main chamber of the dungeon they've been crawling through for the past couple of hours, and all of a sudden we have to stop because it's 2 a.m. Now, unfortunately, we don't have the luxury of extending the time to go forward because at that point, we're just so darn tired. I've done it before where I've had to end the game abruptly and it doesn't feel good. Because of that limitation, I've had to rethink about the way I do endings. And the best example of cliffhangers that I can think of is actually TV shows. They do it really well. You have an episode that's locked in for 45 minutes or so. And right at the end, just when you think it's all over, boom, they catch you and you're like, oh my gosh, what's going to happen to the next one? And I wanted to recreate this experience with my players. And I found three tips that actually make this possible. Number one, your players are moving in a positive or negative direction during the game. A cliffhanger can amplify or change that direction. Say, for example, your party successfully bluffs their way into the good graces of the king. That is a positive direction. The adventure is moving in such a way where things are working out in their favor. Now, a negative cliffhanger introduced in this scenario could look something like this. Just as they are brought into the presence of the king, they are introduced as the culprits responsible for murdering the crown prince and the session. So you can see there that by ending with a negative cliffhanger, you're taking the positive direction and shifting that energy towards a negative outcome. Now let's see it in the other direction. Let's say, for example, your players are overwhelmed by a powerful warrior queen who readies a killing blow on one of the players. Now, that's a negative direction. They're being overwhelmed by the enemy. A positive cliffhanger can look something like this. As she raises her weapon overhead, her eyes go wide as she stares down at your players and whispers, it can be. Now, the second thing to notice about cliffhanger is actually what's leading up to it. In order to launch your cliffhangers, you need to leverage the lead up. Remember that positive and negative direction thing? Check this out. Uh, the first thing that becomes visible is the blood hitting the wall, and you hear the drop before the spell fade. You see a body materialize out of invisibility. You hear behind you from the mirror. Oh. You will never reach the wild mother's embrace in time. Reaches forward, hits the other side of the mirror, the glass cracks, and the face is gone. And the crack remains as you see your own image behind the shattered glass in the reflection. The shock factor is actually a byproduct of a cliffhanger done right. A good cliffhanger respects the player's efforts and builds on that anticipation without undermining their achievements. And that's a really important thing to understand. A cliffhanger is not meant to just, haha, you saved the princess, but it turns out she's dead on your arrival. I mean, a bad cliffhanger sidelines all the efforts leading up to it, and I hate when I do it. And what I found is that these three tips really help guide my thoughts as a game master and keeps me on track with creating something that's worthwhile for everyone on the table. But the most incredible thing that I found is that there's not one or two cliffhangers. There's actually around 30 types of cliffhangers that we can use as game masters, which I'll cover in the next video. Just kidding, I do not want to do a video about 30 cliffhangers because I think it's going to be a little boring. So instead, I want to let you in on a secret. I have been quietly putting together a book about cliffhangers, talking about all 30 of them, broken down into the three major categories that we experience as GMs. The exploration category, the conversation or interaction category, and also the combat confrontation category. This book is in its first draft, and I'm happy to say it's ready for review. So if you would like to be part of the project, I would love to hear what you guys think about it, to see if it's useful, how to make it better, and yeah, so if, you, if that's something you'd like to do, hop onto my Patreon page. From there, you can see the draft, and I would love to hear your feedback on how to make this better. I am actually have no idea how to publish a book or, or launch a Kickstarter, and I would really love some advice to do so, because my goal for this is actually to have several cards that we can actually use during our session, so that when we're in a certain situation, all we have to do is flip a card and let that prompt our imagination to create something amazing in order to end our game. So if that's something that you want to do, I'd love to hear from you guys. Thank you for your time. As always, really appreciate the support. If you found this video helpful, go ahead and give it a like and a thumbs up. If you know a Game Master who really benefited from this, go ahead and send this video to them. So until then, until the next video, thanks for watching Game Master, and I'll see you in the next one.